Okay. Good morning. So let's do our meditation first. Please find a comfortable sitting, keep your back straight. Gently close your eyes. After many months later, we are here at the temple, physically. Many people are waiting for this. I got so many messages asking, when do you open the temple? Today is the day. We are so fortunate to be here in person, in front of this beautiful Buddha symbol of peace, happiness and contentment. Temple is your refuge, place for you to find inner strength, inner peace. And coming to the temple and making your inner temple peaceful. And also so many people are joined on Zoom. All are welcome to this morning, Saturday morning meditation. Take few deep, long breaths and relax your whole body. Please do it few times. Now send your loving thoughts towards yourself, thinking, I am well, I am happy, I am peaceful. Now send your loving thoughts towards your family, 
May all of my family members be well, be happy, be peaceful. Now send your loving thoughts towards the whole world. May all living beings be well, be happy, be peaceful. Now slowly turn your attention to your breath. Every breath you take in, you take out, is taken mindfully.
if you are distracted by a thought, feeling or sensation, bring your attention back, back to the breath or present moment. mind wanders, that is the nature of the mind, don't try to control it, just be with it, be friendly with your mind, no need to make rules, be your observer, observing what is coming and what is going. When you are observing, you may understand something beautiful. Whatever you are observing, they are changing. They are not permanent. What, what is the wisdom there? If things are changing, we all have to learn how to be with them or be with it. Then everything is coming and going, passing by. We are not clinging to them or attaching to them. or we are not wishing them to come back.
you cannot breathe last moment you cannot breathe the next moment only right now this moment Now bring your palms together close to your heart. <clears throat> Think to yourself, I have a beautiful life. I am grateful for this life. I am grateful for the temple. I am grateful for the practice. I am grateful to the Buddha, his teaching, and all our community. I am grateful to my breath, which is my life. I respect this life. I never do anything harmful to myself and I never do harmful things to others. This is my practice. Now observe your mind, observe your body. Your body is relaxed, your mind is calm, tranquil and peaceful. Make this powerful, strong determination to practice regular basis every day, even few minutes. Now I am going to chant for you all. So many people requested blessings, healing, their difficult time, physical challenges. And also some people requested for their family members has me to chant for everybody. I am putting this loving intention towards everybody who requested prayers, blessing and healing. This chanting for you all, for your well-being. Please receive. 
to see you all after many months later at the temple. Um, temple was empty many months and uh, but still we all are surviving. Temple is surviving, I am surviving, you are surviving. Uh, most of my time I am listening, I am communicating with people who wants to be spiritual who wants to practice, who wants to learn meditation, who are searching wisdom. Uh, every day, uh, people looking into those information and sending messages and uh, make a you know, conversation, always something. Uh, during this pandemic, one thing I observe, so many people are into practice. When I say into practice, I can put into two different categories. 
one group of people, I think their intention is the same, same intention, uh, want to uh, really searching some inner peace, uh, your own practice, searching inside. And, uh, and also, other group also, they have the same intention, but they are looking for lots of imp- information, like facts and details, uh, like a study groups, uh, which is wonderful too. I can see both groups really go inward and really searching wisdom here, somewhere, whatever they are going through in life. Another group, they are studying more and looking for information and try to bring practice inward. And uh, then I saw another group, they are doing both together in balanced life. Why I say that? Because uh, last night I was thinking about it. Uh, you know, a few days ago I was in Las Vegas, then I returned home yesterday. Uh, after I come home yesterday, somebody contacted me and said, last six, eight months, I studied a lot. Because I had time, I had lots of fear, anxiety, I'm looking for some relief. One thing I did, I call my practice or my study or whatever, I studied a lot, I searched a lot. You know, so I collected so many information. What Buddha said, what Jesus said, what other spiritual teachers said, many different religions. Um, it, it was, he said, it was so amazing for me to see all those information. But today when I look back, I was so happy what I did, but same time I realized I didn't take things into my life. I collected information. So now I'm asking you, what did you do? You know, during the last eight, nine whole year, you collected information searching truth, or you are, you are really doing it? So no need to answer it now, but think about it. So then that person said, I feel sometime it is, I'm, I waste my time. Then I said to this person, you didn't waste your time. You learn, which is wonderful. You know, now think about, you know, being a monk so many years, what I learned, like an academical level. Those information are very powerful. Now those information are in my mind. Now I can see myself, last nine, ten months, all those information I collected, I used them get into my deeper practice, because I had those tools. Collecting tools are a wonderful thing, but sometimes people love to collect the tools and hoarding them. I can see that group and that, those people too, collecting them, but they never use them. Now think about certain things you are collecting, 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 never used, never used. And um, especially in Sri Lanka, I don't know here, uh, they have lots of uh, antique stuff. Like think about like very old, like glasses or cups or mugs, like a China kind of things, right? And collected, they are thinking, this is from my great-great-grandfather. You know, it's collectible things. You know, they're collecting and collecting things, but it's very interesting, they never use them. They never use those cups. But still, there's a value which is totally fine with me. So I don't want to see same thing happening with your dharma practice. You are collecting information like a child, like a baby, and like a collecting toys, never use them. So what I'm asking, whatever you are collecting information, studies, every time, every time, try to put into the practical level pra- practice. Otherwise, it's useless, your time and all those information. And also, in the Buddhist teaching, now let's talk a little bit more. In the Buddhist teaching, there is a very famous word, maybe you heard it before, in Pali, 
we call the papancha. Papancha. Okay, this came to my mind, it's papancha. So, a translation of that word is uh, mental formation. Mental formation. Oh, simple word I use, making stories. What you are doing now? <laughs> what you are doing now? You know, papancha. This means always mental formations are happening. Some mental formation are positive, some are negative. Most of the time we are in those categories. But some, once in a while our mental formation is kind of in the middle, balance. It's not going to those extremes. Now how we are making this mental formation? Using our mind. Having a mind, I was thinking yesterday, having a mind is a beautiful thing. We have a mind. But if you don't have mind and mindfulness, sometimes that, that mind making us crazy. That's what happened with the mental formation. Make sense? Now you are making all those stories without mindfulness, then you are creating pain and suffering. When you are making mental formation, when you have mindfulness with it, then you try to use them for your own benefit. So, <laughs> it's very interesting how people contacting me, middle of nowhere. So, yesterday this uh, uh, forward me an uh, email, somebody sent it to the temple. Uh, Bhante, somebody wants to contact you in person, you know, in, over the phone. So then, after I come here, uh, to Chicago, so what I did, there was an email, I called that person, uh, that person from Canada. Right after I say, I'm Bhante Sujata, I got your message, and so the way she uh, react, oh my God, Bhante, I cannot believe you, how are you doing? He, she was so joyful. Then I was thinking, she knows me, the way she react. Then I ask her, what you, you know, tell me a little bit more about you and did you meet me before? She said, not at all. But the way she act and you know, it's so beautiful, she was so joyful to hear my voice, she cannot even believe I call her. Then she said, I'm uh, from Canada, Toronto. I'm listening to your YouTube so many years, most of your talks I listen. So I'm following you all the time. So I was taking care of my mother. I was taking care of my mother. She got uh, virus. Then I got it. I got virus too. So, then now, recovered myself three weeks later. I'm doing really well. But my mind always telling, I'm not. My mind is always telling, I am not well. Then I went to the doctor. They check everything. They say, no, you are perfect. Everything is fine. You are clean and wonderful. Then she went to one of the therapists or counselors too. Then everybody said, you are fine. But she is thinking she is not fine. <laughs> now this papancha, now think about this thought, giving her hard time. Just one thought she is thinking, I am not well because of this virus. It's affected to my body, it is affected to my organs, and she's, what she is doing day and night, creating that story. Now she is believing it. Then I said, you are crazy. <laughs> I was joking, I said, you are crazy, that's your mind. Now I ask her, be aware about that thought. Don't give power to that thought. During this pandemic, what we did, so many people did, sitting, you know, we are stuck inside the houses. What people are doing? Keep creating stories and worrying about it. Many people did. Why? They don't know about mindfulness. They don't have that much to do. They cannot do outdoor activities. Always mind going crazy and crazy and crazy. And so they are creating stories. End of the day, end of the week, after a few weeks, few months later, they feel very challenging and difficult. They are believing those are real. So, 
now remember when we are chanting at the temple mano pubbanga ma dhamma mano setta mano we are chanting mind is a forerunner of all states so that means whatever mind telling you don't believe it this mind is crazy this mind is crazy so always this mind giving us challenging difficult wrong information if you don't have mindfulness one lady <laughs> called me and said bande last night i had a very interesting experience during my meditation people want to t- share with me everything that's great i asked what during my meditation i was sitting and keep practicing kept keep practicing and then i saw a background voice i was listening because i'm practicing mindfulness i was listening while i was listening i recognized that voice that's you bante sujata is speaking to me can you believe that what you are talking to me i was listening and listening you are giving me a dharma talk or something like that i don't know she was so excited about it really excited about it then she was telling me to make it con- she was to confirm it then she asked me bante did you talk to me last evening i was driving home then i had to be honest i said no not at all <laughs> then i calculate my time i was busy in a class or something i said i didn't even i didn't have a thought about you i didn't talk to you i don't have that power then she didn't believe it no you did talk to me it's very clear to me i heard your voice i said no my friend i didn't talk to you no i'm very sorry then she said no you are lying now think what she is believing this now you are lying even she thinks i'm lying to her why i lied to her now i try to convince her no no i didn't talk but if i am if i want to use that weakness i can use it i can i can say yes yes i called you you know i talked to you last night you are the only one i am communicating like this i have this power then next day she call all the other 10 people and bante you know, maybe people think she is crazy <laughs> or i am crazy <laughs> so you know then maybe more people will come to the temple because i have all those super powers but i don't want to have those kind of uh, crazy things in my mind i said no my friend i want to tell you i didn't talk to you she doesn't want to believe it she is just believing whatever she was thinking and experience that papancha finally i was little annoyed by that because i cannot tell her i didn't i said my friend that's not your meditation practice that is that is called hallucination makes sense that is called the hallucination right away she hang up the phone why she doesn't want to hear that i like it i want her to hang up the phone anyway so then later she contacted me again i'm sorry i i understand that's my hallucination so when you are creating mental stories mental phenomena if you don't have mindfulness next to that you are going to believe in it please don't so we call the awakened mind that's what we call the buddha your mind is fully awake what exactly happening right now so for my personal experience during this difficult time we call the pandemic i had some weak points too being honest you know especially handling with my parents i had some here and there few moments which i really don't appreciate but i'm so good every time when i'm experience something i saw something beautiful practice happening in my life more than whatever i read from the book in that present moment i realized this is my practice this is the opportunity so while i was teaching in las vegas few days ago one of our students uh, she said bante i think we had this pandemic even before this big pandemic life itself full of you know pandemic every day we had these things but we never focus on those things now after this big hit everybody feel like there's a pandemic now 
Now can you see these experiences happening every day in our life? If you are mindful enough to see them and observe them, understand them. Otherwise you lose opportunity. Now think about after whole year having this issue, how many people still feel miserable in their mental state? Mind is still crazy. They don't want to accept things. They don't want to change. They don't want to understand the truth of life. Still they want to suffer. Now why you are here this morning at the temple? You can stay home and log into Zoom and listen to me on do the meditation while you are in person. So you want to feel this good energy in this place. How wonderful, right? You want to feel it. So what I'm asking, now still we are going through this difficult time, this pandemic life, day by day, moment by moment, open your heart and mind to this wisdom to learn something beautiful. What I am doing these days, my biggest practice, I call the mirror practice. <laughs> That's my new word now. I call the mirror practice. How I learn about the mirror practice, this is my moment. Okay. So, as many people know, I was in Sri Lanka for months taking care of my parents. <clears throat> my dad having a dementia and going really rough time. So, now I'm the caretaker. <laughs> and so, after 40 years, I never experienced these kind of things in my life. Now, I'm going real life. So one day I took him to the hospital one evening, spent all day, then late in the evening I took him home and settled down all the medication. And the next day morning he woke up. He was confused, or I don't know what happened. He get into a somebody's wake up and you know, came to our, our meditation center. Even he cannot walk. I was angry, be honest. I was so busy, I'm getting ready for the event, my sister also helping. And so without telling my mom and the helper, and he left because he, his mind is not really focused. I was busy, everything is everywhere, people are coming back and forth. Now my father is kind of sick and standing in front of me in the middle of nowhere. No reason to come. I was shocked but he cannot even walk. Then I lost my mind. I kind of yelled at him. I said, what are you doing? So this is not safe. You are going like this. If you are falling or something, you know, all other, you know, like two, three minutes, I yelled at him. I tried to say things, you know, this is not right. But I know he has so much respect for me because I'm a monk and, you know, that culture. He even didn't say a word. Then that moment I realized he's better than me. <laughs> he didn't say even, I know he did something not right, but when I say something, he didn't say even a word to me. He was just looking at me, tired. His eyes are tired because of the medication. And exhausted eyes, not strong, and looking at me like a sick puppy like a puppy eyes, like a sad. Then I can see my sister behind me and she doesn't know what to do. She's just looking at me and him. You know, within a second, when I'm looking at his eyes, the sad, tired, exhausted, I saw myself in that eyes. Does it make sense? I saw myself in that eyes. That's why I call the mirror practice. Then I was thinking, these eyes representing my life too. Why I am his son. Then I thought, within next few years, I will be in the same position. I will give you a hard time to these monks at the temple. <laughs> Can you believe it? Asaji, where are you? <laughs> Come and do things. You know, maybe I'm going crazy and chaotic. So that moment, I totally calmed down. I go and, you know, touch him. I said, Dad, let's go home. I said, I'm very sorry. He didn't say your own word. He just get into the car and go with me. So then I was thinking, my dad, my father, 
did something wrong. I was thinking it is wrong, but it is not wrong. He came to the center to teach me. He came to the center like a Buddha. I was thinking Buddha every day coming like him. So peaceful, smiling, happy. That's what we are thinking Buddha every day is coming to see me. No. My Buddha is coming to see me like sick father. So that moment I realized, wow, this is so powerful. Now I don't feel mad or sad or angry with my father. Why? I'm really getting into the deeper practice. He's always teaching me and telling me something. Hey, I'm going through this. You have to prepare. You have to practice. That's why I said, my mindfulness practice, my spiritual journey is so important to me right now during this pandemic. This pandemic gave me so much energy to see who I am, not the world. So when I see myself more and more lovingly and compassionately, I feel so much deeper connection to the outer world. My family, my parents, or whoever going through a difficult time, I feel connected. These days, I don't know, I try to figure it out, you know, my mind. And I don't know, after this pandemic, I'm more sensitive to people's emotions, or I'm so sensitive to my own emotions. I am in the research right now. Because I feel I'm more uh, emotional to more things happening in the world. You know, I'm so sensitive to them. If I see somebody sad, if I see somebody sick, or if I see somebody is dying, uh, you know, the children are in hungry, you know, without food, you know, my heart is keep going. But I'm trying to figuring out not to be emotional, be mindful, and do whatever I can do to help those people. So I am keep telling these things to you. I am asking, can you prepare yourself for the pandemic life? Not this he, low whole year, but upcoming years. I don't believe this pandemic ever going to end. Never. I think this virus will end, but something will come. That means pandemic never end. <laughs> Things keep coming into life. So what I'm asking, prepare your mind, practice more mindfulness, and do that mirror practice every time when you're somebody difficult, annoying, aging, parents, whatever it is, you can put yourself into that person's life, that basket. Then you can see yourself. Okay. Any thoughts, any questions, comments? Anything you learn, you want to share with me, some wisdom for me? Because always I'm sharing, please teach me something. <laughs> Happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> any any questions? Thoughts? You made a comment uh, at the beginning of your, your talk about different ways of uh, why you just kind of find the path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And their thoughts and others research first. And I think it's it's important to understand that that I took away from that was that it's 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 okay which path works for you. Mm-hmm. Everyone's gonna be wired differently. Mm-hmm. And everyone's going to be that anger point to start with. Mm-hmm. Right? And some, you know, may be able to do that just innately. Mm-hmm. Um, others may need teachings or readings or mm-hmm. something to find that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You always have to apply. Right. Learn, learning is great. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to apply that. Right? That's my point. You need to take action. So right. You know, again, act. Mm-hmm. You know, act on yeah. action. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, you perfectly got it. And so the, the beauty of this studying and making a research about things and getting info, totally fine. I love it. I did it too. So, you know, if you don't lose on that path, then what people are doing, collecting information, then they are in the, the uh, fantasy world. And in that fantasy, we have different fantasies. Oh, I know a lot. So, couple of uh, discussions, um, I saw uh, some people try to say more information. 
in front of all other people. Oh, I know this. How about this sutra? Buddha said this. This sutra? Buddha said this and that. So the good thing about the same person contacted me. Bante, I'm very sorry. I realized something. I won't show off. That's what I did that. I won't show off. That means I want to tell people I know better than you. So then I said, so how wonderful you recognize it. Then I was thinking, how many people in this world don't recognize it? Don't recognize it. I was talking to my friend in Las Vegas, you know, while we are driving. I, if you don't practice whatever we do, like a study, it is not useful. Useful may, may be a little bit, but as you said, application is the more important. So now think about you are doing a sutra study, for example. So end of the sutra, you have to ask a question, what I am going to take into my life? What I am going to practice? I can practice all of them or even one? It is very important. So anytime if you see I am losing in that kind of you know situation, please point it out. I don't get upset. Or push me to a wall. <laughs> Tell Bhante, where's your practice? <laughs> right, exactly. And so you know, I want to let you know it's very interesting. You know, you know, sisters, brothers, and always, you know, we have that connection. So after I go to Sri Lanka first month, it was so challenging for me. Because I'm not used to these kind of things and taking care of these aging parents. I never expecting in my life. I was so impatient. Then my sister came to me and laughed, and because she did all her life, she said, what did you do as a monk last 40 years? She just said it in front of everybody. I said to sister, that's right. Thank you so much for asking that question. That's what I'm asking myself too. Then we both are started laughing. So then think about that experience giving me so much wisdom to see myself. Yeah. Anything? So don't give up on your practice. That's what I'm asking. Don't give up. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming. Now, you know, in future, temple is open to these 25 people. And so you can come during the day if you want to do uh, your own practice at the temple. Please do that. And also, um, we are planning to do a precept ceremony. Uh, this is the way we are planning. Uh, Next month, whole next month, starting uh, this Wednesday, we are doing lots of uh, classes uh, related to precepts. All the teaching, all the Dharma talks and all those things, you know, the guest monks, everybody is talking about the related to the precepts. And also we are planning to do a couple of uh, organized classes for people to attend. Anybody can attend to those classes. Then uh, April, first week, first Saturday and second Saturday, we are doing the precept ceremony. We are doing two precept ceremony this time. You know, why we cannot accommodate 50 people at the same time. We are going to accommodate 25 people first Saturday, second Saturday, 25 people. Stay focused and stay tuned. You get more information about the precept ceremony. If you have question about the precept, how to take, what to do, please always send an email to the office or myself and ask question. However, virtually, we will support you to organize your mind to take the precepts. Okay, this sounds good. Anything else? All right, all good. Okay, thank you so much. Please, everybody, stand up.